I like to consider myself a realistic Lonzo Ball fan. And by being that, I understand that he is a, a, a good player with decent potential, but has a lot of flaws in his game. Um, like, he doesn't have a great mid-range jumper, he's not the greatest finisher in the world, and he doesn't draw contact well, among, the lot, among a lot of other things. But I also recognize that he's a great playmaker, a great and underrated defender, and has shot the three ball way better than people I've given, given him credit for last year and um, at times this year. Uh, but with all that, I feel like he is also being misused in New Orleans right now, and that's why I'm going to talk about in this video and about trade opportunities to other team, teams that will may use him better and have better um, have better personnel around him for him. I feel like the Pelicans have good personnel, but uh, just with the other players around him, besides like Zion and B.I., it, it's hard for him to really do what he is good at doing, which is pushing it in transition. Um, um, with his athleticism and speed and his catch and shoot jumper and I feel like if he goes to other places he may ha uh, have a better chance of getting better at the some of his flaws in the game so that's what I'm gonna talk about in this video so like and subscribe on the video if you haven't already and let's get right into it first I'm gonna talk about Zoe's pro and cons and what he really brings to the table as a point guard um, I feel like his two biggest traits and two biggest skills is that he's just a 3 and D point guard that can knock down the three and that can play really good defense on the uh, other side of the ball. And those are really two valuable things to have. And he's a bigger point guard, which brings versatility, which is also a really good thing to have, which is why he fits with a lot of these teams because he can guard ones and twos and maybe a couple of threes because of his height and his wingspan and his athleticism. So uh, on both, uh, especially on the defensive side of the ball, he brings a lot of versatility utility with his height and athleticism so that is probably his two uh biggest traits uh, his two biggest skills besides his playmaking and obviously his playmaking especially in transition is, is insane because of how quick and fast he is and how good his vision is and how good he sees the game but in the half court it's not as good because he just he's not a, um, a big threat to shoot off the dribble which makes his threat to pass not as good so that's why he's not a very good playmaker, um, especially this year in the half court. But I feel like if he has better, a lot of better weapons around him, especially that can shoot, because Zion is really just um, a rim threat. He is not a threat to shoot whatsoever. So maybe if he gets better as a threat to shoot and the people around him are, are a better threat to shoot, like on the Clippers or some other teams that uh, he is rumored to maybe get traded to, maybe his playmaking in the half court is better than it is right now with the Pelicans. The reason why also I think Lonzo's not playing well is because he's being misused with the Pelicans and Stan Van Gundy. I feel like he was even used better with Gentry, but Gundy just makes him, it looks like it makes him play slower and takes the ball out of his hands and does it, makes him a catch and shoot player, which he isn't at all. Although I did say he's a decent 3 and D player, his 3 point shot is obviously not his best, his best trait, his best skill. He's had to work on it a lot to even be decent, but it's not his best skill. He needs to have the ball in his hands. Uh, at least a little bit when Brandon Ingram and Zion don't have it to play make and do what he does and that's what really shows his value but if you're going to put him in the corner have Eric Butzo have the ball and Eric Butzo is not even close to being as good as a playmaker as him it really doesn't make any sense and you're making like I said earlier you're making him play slow as well so you're taking the ball out of his hands and you don't you don't really ha have him doing well in transition either even even last year at least Alvin Gentry uh, had him in Zion and transition a lot. At least that Gentry wasn't a great coach, but at least he he knew that Zion is a great athlete and is in his. He's an insane athlete, not a great athlete. He's a once a generation athlete. And Lonzo is a great playmaker and is great, um, uh, great playmaker, great passer. He has a great mind, and those two work really well together. Especially if you have a great playmaker that's really athletic, just like Lonzo. So I just feel like Gundy hasn't used that at all this year. If Lonzo isn't rebounding and chucking it, it just seems like he's not playing as fast as, as he as he did last year even though Gentry didn't use him to his best of his abilities he he used him decently so I feel like Stan Van Gundy is another big problem and also I feel like another problem is just the 
the spacing is terrible, and that's also hurting Lonzo. It's hurting Zion and B.I. as well, but it's making Lonzo a catch-and-shoot player because they just need some type of three-point shot. They need some type of three-point ability in the lineup, and when you have Steven Adams and you don't have Zion at the five, then Lonzo and Eric Bledsoe are, are supposed to be your two catch-and-shoot catch shoot players when the starters are in, and that's never good. But if you have Steven Adams out, Zion at the Zion at the five, or Josh Hart, or somebody at the four, then it gives a little bit more spacing. It takes that pressure off Alonzo to have to be like a really good three point shooter, like he's had to be this season. And because of that, his percentage has gone down, and it looks like his confidence has gone down, and his three point shot more than it did last year because he's shooting 39% last year. He's shooting just at 30% this year. So you can see that something's happening, something's wrong. He He's looked at to be more of a catch and shoot player than he's really supposed to be, and he needs the ball in his hands a little bit more often. Now I'm gonna talk about some teams that I think Lonzo, if Lonzo got traded to, he'd make a very good impact on and it'd be a, a valuable trade for that team to make. Now the first team I got up is the Chicago Bulls. And the reason why I feel like the Chicago Bulls would be a great place for Lonzo Ball is because they don't have a really good playmaker in the backcourt or a good perimeter defender in the backcourt. And that's the two things that Lonzo is the best at. And if you had Kobe White in a six man, six man role, uh, playing just as much minutes as Lonzo and being that scorer that he really is, is, that's a really good role for Kobe White, and I like that for him. And Lonzo and Zach Levine in the backcourt. You let Zach Levine do his thing. You let Lonzo play make and defend, and you let him defend your best player. And you can take out Zach Levine and put Kobe White in inside Lonzo to this too, and he still guards your best player, but Kobe White's the one doing the scoring, and Lonzo's still the one doing the playmaking. I feel like that can be a really good three-guard trio, and maybe they can do a little something like the Thunder did last year with Shea, uh, Chris Paul and Dennis Schroeder and have that three guard lineup at the end of the game so you're not um, so you're not missing out on one of your best players on the team just because they come off the bench like Dennis Schroeder did last year. So I feel like if the Chicago Bulls traded for Lonzo Ball, that'd be a really good um, that'd be a really good uh, match because of the playmaking and perimeter perimeter defense they're lacking in the backcourt. Next person I got up is Lonzo to the Knicks, and I feel like Alfred Payton is just not a very good point, uh, starting point guard in the league, and I feel like Lonzo would do way better in that role. Um, he's a little bit more of a scoring threat than Alfred Payton is, and more, a little bit more confident in his jump shot, and is also a better playmaker and better in transition with Julius Randle, RJ Barrett, Mitchell Robinson. That can be really good, and that defensive, that defensive starting lineup will be even more insane than it already is because of the length that Lonzo brings. But I feel like the Knicks are doing really good. Chicago Bulls, I feel like we need a player like Lonzo. I don't feel like the Knicks need Lonzo because the Knicks are doing really good, really good defensive lineup. But I just feel like Lonzo's an upgrade to Alfred. For Peyton and maybe they can be a low-key playoff team if they got Lonzo but I don't think it's that big of a deal if they don't I feel like this is like the team that I just like to see Lonzo on but I just don't really think would happen because they're doing better than expected this year and Alpha Peyton is fine and Emmanuel quickly I made a video on him last a couple days ago and he's the it looks like he's a future guard for this team so probably not the best fit probably not the best prediction but I feel like I wanted to talk about them because It'd be a really good fit, and I just Alfred Payton's doing fine. He's serviceable, so if they don't want to mess anything up, mess chemistry up, and get somebody that's really good for the locker room or something that, like that out of town, I respect that. And Alfred Payton would be just fine because Julius Randle and RJ Bear are the stars of the show right now. The last team I think Lonzo would be really good for is the Los Angeles Clippers. And that's just because I just feel like they need another level of playmaking on that team. And they really haven't had a true point guard in this Paul George Kawhi Leonard era because Patrick Beverly just isn't that guy. He's a great defender, great leader, decent catch and shoot, a three point shooter, but he's just not a good playmaker. He's not good at setting players up. He's more of a, a sit in the corner guy on offense and give his heart out on defense. I feel like Lonzo can be a more valuable offensive player than Patrick Beverly, but I don't think he'll take Patrick Beverly's spot. I feel like Patrick Beverly can keep doing what he's doing. And you should slide in Lonzo at the two, but really at the one, but at the two because Patrick Beverly is shorter. You have Paul George at the three, Kawhi at the four, and Serge Ibaka at the five with Batum. With Batum, Williams, if you don't trade him, if you trade Kennard instead, but probably you trade Williams. So Kennard, Morris, and Batum off the bench as their best players off the bench. I feel like that's a good team because it just brings another level of defense. And now Paul George can fo focus on offense even more because those lengthy shooting guards, those taller shooting guards that Patrick Beverly really can't guard because of his height, you give that assignment to Lonzo. Now Paul George can focus on, focus on offense even more than he already is. You 
uh, instead of Paul George have, having to play make for Kawhi and Kawhi having to play make for Paul George, you could have them both uh, getting set up by Lonzo, and I feel like that's a really, really perfect uh, situation for Lonzo Ball in a winning situation finally, and it'd be really cool to see him succeed if he wins the Los Angeles Clippers because I feel like he can be a really good playmaker and just uh, a successful defender in, in that uh, culture with the Los Angeles Clippers. They're on a roll right now, and, and they look like a really good team. They're underrated because of what happened last year. But if they got Lonzo, that'd be a really good piece for them, and can really f uh, they can probably maybe fulfill a little bit more of what they wanted to do last year, uh, last year, this year. With that new edition, I'm not saying it's championship, a championship edition. I just feel like it, it gives them more depth. It gives them another really good defender, and it gives them that playmaker that they've been needing for Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. That's what I think Lonzo brings to any team he's on, especially the Clippers. All right, guys, that's all I got for you guys today. If you like this type of content, like and sub on the video if you haven't already. Um, I'm trying to post every other day, like I said last video. I'm trying to get this drink alive. I'm trying to get out more content for you guys. So if you like this type of content, like and sub on the video, and I'll see you guys next time.